All right, so today I want to show you 12 ball pythons that you can buy for less than $100. It's pretty amazing. I actually went over to morphmarket.com and looked through all the snakes. There's not a whole lot to choose from, but you can buy some pretty awesome snakes over there. And keep in mind on morphmarket.com, you actually, most of the times you have to have them shipped to your door. So that's actually, usually you pay, you know, up as much as like $80 for shipping in some cases. But if you can actually get them without shipping, there's several ways you can do it. You can actually buy them at Reptile shows if you're lucky you'll find some for under hundred dollars and sometimes you can actually kind of group them together and save on the shipping so if you actually found someone that had multiple snakes that were less than a hundred and you bought a whole bunch of them sometimes you can actually group them together and get them all shipped for sometimes as low as forty dollars for shipping depending on how far you're shipping so what I want to do is I want to go over and show you some of these ball pythons that I picked out for less than a hundred dollars that is pretty incredible and then I want to show you what what I would actually do with those genes if you're actually breeding ball pythons mixing it into other combinations pretty much the best thing that you can do with those genes all right, so I'm going to jump over here at morphmarket.com, and I want to start with pretty much the cheapest snake that you can buy, and that is a classic, otherwise known as a normal. Here in the United States, most people call these normals, and I think overseas in certain parts of the world, they actually call these classics. This is pretty much the wild type ball python. And it was kind of interesting when I first started in ball pythons, I produced a whole bunch of classics, and I actually, it was funny, I started selling them at $20 a piece at the show, and it's kind of interesting. Everyone's like competing for the lowest price, and I pretty much pretty much had the lowest price in the whole show. And then I found out that most people don't really sell them for twenty dollars. I sold them really fast, and such what happens is you sell them all, and then everyone goes to your neighbor's table and buys all their normals. They're pretty much the ones that sell the fastest and the cheapest, and you sell out of them real quick. And then I increased the price on the second year to fifty dollars. I was selling them pretty good. As a matter of fact, I actually increased to eighty dollars. You can sell. I've, I've actually seen quite a few people over here on Morph Market selling normals for a hundred dollars a piece plus the shipping so it can be really variable. As a matter of fact if you actually go in a pet store you'll pay over a hundred dollars almost every time if it's like kind of your box pet store you know you can actually go into a reptile store and maybe get a better deal but it can be pretty variable just for a, a snake that's like a wild type with no genes at all so it really depends on where you get them. If you actually if you're really lucky you can actually get them for 20 bucks which is pretty incredible sometimes you can get a really good deal so take a look at this this is another gene I actually found over here you can actually buy this snake this is actually a vanilla or a fire pretty amazing that you can get some of these genes over here for less than a hundred dollars I say in most cases most of these genes actually I'd say probably you know I don't really like to quote prices but I'd say you could you most cases you actually see them for sale for maybe be about $125 as far as the high end for a single gene, just a single gene snake that's been around for a really long time that's really well established. You know, this is like some of your really basic genes. So this is actually a vanilla or fire, which comes from the combination of the vanilla fire combination, which is allelic. It's actually a vanilla cream. So as a matter of fact, if I actually bought this, you know, it has a 50% chance of being vanilla, 50% chance of being fire. But if you knew which one it was, you could actually breed it with another vanilla or fire and then add pastel. That's what I would do. And you'd end up with this snake. This is the vanilla scream. Take a look at this. Let me tell you this snake is more than a hundred dollars when you start making some of these really crazy combinations and kind of the cool thing about this is when you mix the vanilla and the fire together it really scrambles up the pattern gives it a really interesting look and then when you add pastel it actually changes it into kind of a really clean yellow really scrambled up pattern pretty amazing combination so here is the spider. The spider is, well, I actually found this one for under $100. I can actually show you some of these prices. It's kind of crazy. This one actually is still for sale for $60, but then you look at the shipping on this one, the shipping is $50, so you're paying like $110. But if you're actually to get this at a reptile shop, you probably could get it for under $100 if you kind of shop around. And the spider is pretty cool. It has a really dominant, visual, visually dominant pattern that when you mix it in a lot of combinations, you can actually see 
the spider web pattern in a lot of your combos. And kind of the weird thing about the spider is you don't want to breed two spiders together because a lot of people say that it's a lethal combination. So if I actually bought the spider, here's what I would do. I'd mix in a whole bunch of brightening genes with the spider and you can make something like this. Take a look at this crazy snake. This is actually the spider with, with the coral glow, uh, which really br brings out a lot of yellow. The Enchi reduces the pattern and then the lesser in the spider, the orange dream, yellow belly. As a matter of fact, the orange dream and the yellow belly are brightening genes along with the Enchi. The Enchi reduces the pattern, but also brings out some of the kind of the orange color. So you have all these orange and yellow genes all working together to really enhance the spider. This one's really crazy. As a matter of fact, though, if you want to look at the price on this one, this one actually is for $4,000. So that is the potential of what you can do with the spider. So here is the yellow belly. The yellow belly is actually pretty interesting. It's actually one of the genes that it's, it almost looks like a normal in a lot of cases. You have to be have a really keen eye to pick out a yellow belly. But probably what I would do is if I bought a yellow belly for under a hundred dollars, what I would do is I would mix it with asphalt to make some of the freeways. And when you mix other genes in with the asphalt, you get some of the craziest combinations. Take a look at this one. This is actually this is this is a really crazy combination. Look Look at the, the crazy pattern and the white background. This is actually the Super Pastel Enchi Freeway. So the freeway is the combination of the yellow belly and the asphalt, which is really, I think, the ultimate potential of the yellow belly. And then you mix in Enchi, and that is the Enchi Freeway is called the, the Mardi Gras, which is kind of interesting. And then you mix in the Super Pastel, which really gives you this really white background. Pretty amazing. So here is the pinstripe. I can't believe there's actually a pinstripe over here for under $100. Pretty amazing. This one actually was for sale for $75, which is kind of crazy. And of course, the shipping always gets you over here at Morph Market. And that's kind of the hard part with selling really kind of the low-end snakes. I actually have some over here. You know, I have some, I have some normals listed over here. And the shipping, in a lot of cases, is almost the same as the, the price of the snake, which kind of makes people kind of hesitate before they buy into these. And let me at the reptile shows those normals and the, the pinstripes and just the single gene animals that have been around for a really long time that are under a hundred dollars let me tell you they sell super fast so if i was actually to take a pinstripe and work it into something else what i would actually do is i would add pastel to make the lemon blast which really jumbles up the pattern and then i would add desert ghost which really cleans it up and take a look at this this is a crazy combination this is actually a lemon blast desert ghost Ghost. And the Desert Ghost is actually a recessive gene, so you'd need two copies of the Desert Ghost. The Desert Ghost is pretty expensive, too. I haven't actually looked at the price on this one. This one actually is for sale for $1,200. Pretty amazing. So here is the spot nose. The spot nose is pretty interesting. And uh, as a matter of fact, let me look at the price on this one. This is It's hard to believe that some of these are over here. I couldn't believe that I was actually looking at snakes under $100. I'd say usually these are listed at a little bit over 100 over here at Morph Market. And the spot nose, it's kind of interesting. I'd say it's a standalone gene. It looks almost like a normal. A lot of times on spot noses, you can see a really defined pattern right on the head. It has a pretty obvious head and when you work spot nose into other genes, you really get uh, an enhanced pattern. It really jumbles up the pattern, especially if you mix it in with other genes that kind of jumble up the pattern too. So pr pretty much what I do is I take the spot nose and I breed it to like a leopard to really explode the pattern. And take a look at this thing. This is this is one of the craziest ones. This is actually the leopard spot nose with the addition of the the firefly and the yellow belly. So this is the fire the pastel and the yellow belly which are all brightening genes and the pastel kind of mixes it up a little bit but if you actually mix the spot nose with the leopard you get this really crazy shattered pattern pretty amazing counties i'm sure this one's pretty expensive too i haven't even looked at this one this one is actually two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars as a matter of fact this one actually sold pretty crazy 
So here is the Enchi, and I'd say in most cases you could probably get an Enchi for less than $100. It's a really popular gene, and it's, it's really abundant. It's In the ball python industry, there's a lot of Enchis, and the Enchi makes pretty amazing combinations with pretty much everything you work in with it. And the Enchi, essentially what it does is it reduces the pattern, and a lot of times it'll bring out a lot of the oranges and the yellows in a lot of your combinations. So here's what happens uh, if you actually take an Enchi and work it in with probably the, what I would actually do with the Enchi is I would work it in with banana. That's probably my number one combination of working Enchi into anything. And take a look at this. This is actually a banana Enchi combination. And I actually did a video on banana Enchi because it's so amazing. You work any other gene in with banana Enchi and you get a really clean snake that is bright yellow with this crazy pattern right down the top. And sometimes this pattern can kind of change into little like little blobs going all down the snake depending on the version of the Enchi that you actually have. Pretty amazing. So here is the Mojave, and the Mojave, I can't believe, is under $100. So this one's $80. I'd say usually this is pretty much the minimum for Mojaves over there. I've actually seen them, you know, $120, $150 for Mojave. Even at some of the reptile shows, it's pretty amazing. Mojaves are pretty popular. It's actually in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. So if you mix it with certain genes, you get a white snake. But what I would do with the Mojave is I would mix it with the Phantom to make the Purple Passion and take a look at the purple passion that is a really crazy thing it's actually considered a blue-eyed leucistic but it actually has this purplish color and bright blue eyes which is kind of crazy as a matter of fact purple passions aren't really that expensive this one sold for $350 relatively not expensive compared to some of the ones for thousands of dollars all right, so take a look at this thing. This is actually a cinnamon. The cinnamon is a dark gene. It's kind of interesting when you mix cinnamon with other genes. A lot of times you'll actually get a darkening effect. It'll darken the background a lot of combos. And what I would actually do is if I bought a cinnamon for $100, as a matter of fact, I was actually looking at the price on this one. This is actually, this is still for sale for $100. Pretty amazing that you can actually get a cinnamon for that. What I would actually do with a cinnamon is I'd breed it to something else, produce some more cinnamon, cinnamons and take two of those cinnamons, breed them together and make the super cinnamon and take a look at what the super cinnamon looks like. Pretty amazing. It's a pretty much a jet black snake that is patternless. That is, you know, it's, it's actually pretty visually dominant if you try to work other things into the super cinnamon. There are a few things you can actually do with the super cinnamon. It's actually allelic with black pastel. So if you take a, a cinnamon and work it in with black pastel, you pretty much get the same effect is an all-black snake that is completely patternless and what I've kind of heard is I've kind of heard through the grapevine for some really big breeders that if you actually produce the super cinnamons or the the eight balls or the super black pastels the all-black patternless snake I can I heard that can be a little bit more aggressive a little bit more bitey than some of the other combinations it's kind of an interesting aspect of the super cinnamon so here is the lesser. The lesser is actually in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. I'd say most lessers sell for, I don't know what this is sells for. As a matter of fact, this one's actually up for sale for $100. I've actually seen these usually about $125 in a lot of reptile shows. So the lesser is in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. What I would actually do with the lesser is you can actually breed it with the Mojave. The lesser Mojave is an all-white snake with blue eyes. Pretty much the ultimate blue-eyed leucistic. And take a look at this. This is what it looks like pretty amazing combination and you get this really stark white snake and the, the lesser Mojave is really super white and it covers up pretty much all the other genes in the combination this one's actually listed as a banana the banana is usually visually dominant and it's completely overwhelmed by the white snake and they always have these bright blue eyes which is pretty amazing so here is the pastel. I say, as far as just sheer numbers in ball pythons, the pastel is the number one most popular gene, or I'd say most common gene in all of ball pythons. The pastels are usually bright yellow, and I'd say most of the times you can pick up a pastel at a reptile show for you know under $100. I'd, I've seen a lot of them for about $80. This one's selling for $100. It really depends on how bright the pastel is. Some of them are quite a bit browned out, and for a really bright one, I'd say usually you're paying a little 
little bit more because it's a super bright pastel. This one's really bright. And what I would actually do with the pastel is I would breed it into a clown. Take a look at what happens when you mix clown with pastel. You get a really crazy look and say, and for some reason, the, the combination of pastel and clown really gives you the really crazy mixed up pattern that is, it almost looks comical when you look at this thing. The clown mixed with a lot of the combinations when you add pastel into the mix can really enhance the clown significantly. Pretty amazing combination. So take a look at this. This is a hidden gene woma. I actually found just one, uh, I think there's just one or two hidden gene womas over here listed right at 100. Sometimes I'd say some of these might be difficult to find. You know, every now and then it seems like, you know, sometimes maybe I've actually seen some. Uh, as a matter of fact, I actually kind of skipped over some that were multi-gene combos that I think were underpriced. Kind of kind of like a bonus deal that you'd probably never see again. You know, I'd say you could probably find another hidden gene woma for $100 or less, you know, if you really shopped around. The Hidden Gene Wawa, the first thing that comes to mind is the Inferno working the Yellow Belly and the Pastel into the Hidden Gene Wawa. Take a look at this. This is the Inferno. Look at how bright that is. Really super bright. And a lot of people say, you know, technically the Inferno also contains the granite, which is kind of interesting. I've actually seen people listing Infernos kind of dropping the granite. I think at one point the granite was associated with the Hidden Gene Woma. Uh, originally they thought it was kind of like, you know, once you mix it with the Hidden Gene Woma, I've actually heard in some forums that once you mix it together, it sticks to the Hidden Gene Woma and you can't separate it. I don't know if that's actually the case. I don't think it is, but it was kind of interesting that a lot of people believe that when the granite and the Hidden Gene Woma first came out early, in the ball python craze but that's what i would do with with the hidden gene woma is i would shoot for the inferno so another one I've actually seen over here quite a bit, you can actually buy into Hess, which has which actually has one copy of a recessive gene. As a matter of fact, this is actually a double head. So the DH stands for double head. The hypo is kind of slang for ghost. And this is actually a double head ghost pied, which is kind of interesting. So it almost looks pretty much like a normal ball python. I'd say usually with the head ghost, you can actually just one copy of the ghost. And usually it brightens it a little bit, you know, kind of, the influence of one copy of the recessive gene and sometimes with the pine you can actually see a little bit of markers on the belly sometimes you can see a little bit of a kind of a jumbled up pattern from the hats when you when you kind of mix them into a normal but if you actually take two of these the double head hypo pies and breed them together take a look at what you can actually make you can make a crazy snake like this one this is actually the enchi ghost pie and essentially what the pie is is it brings in these splash of white in the snake and then the ghost really kind of fades it out and the cool thing when you mix in Anchi essentially what that does is it turns it into a low white pie so it pretty much brings all the white just down usually just down to the tail and a lot of times the Anchi will bring out a lot of the oranges and yellows in the combination this is a really crazy snake as a matter of fact this is probably pretty expensive this one actually sold for $1,500 but that is pretty much you know the 12 jeans that I would go after and what I would actually shoot for if I work those into a breeding project. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Dave Kuhn asks, how do you get a four-year-old ball python to switch from eating mice over to rats? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of going through the same thing. I have an older female ball python that has pretty much always been a mouser, and I've been trying to figure out how to switch it from mice over to rats, and I've had limited success. I'd say in some cases, it can be virtually impossible to switch them back from mice to rats. And that's why I'd always suggest feeding mice pretty much as early as possible so you don't get stuck with a mouser it can be really frustrating and some of the things that I've done to actually kind of fix the problem I've actually this is the way you can trick it you can actually try to trick your snake you can feed it a mouse and then about a half hour later you can follow up with another feeding and use a rat and get the rat about the same size and about the same color as the mouse sometimes that works and sometimes it works to scent the rat with a mouse sometimes you can thaw them out in a baggie together if you're using frozen thawed and that way then the mouse 
you know, kind of sense the rat and they're going to smell the rat. Sometimes you can trick them. Sometimes they'll take it and sometimes they won't. And the other thing I found is you can also use a live rat, a small live rat that sometimes they'll actually take the live. I don't really like feeding live. I prefer to feed pretty much frozen thawed as much as possible. But those are some of the ways you can actually try to do it. In a lot of cases, I'd say you're pretty much out of luck and you just have to keep trying to switch them over. And I've actually kind of tricked my ball python to eating a few rats, but she still prefers mice most of the time. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.